Okay, as we get started on this, I want to remind you to write down the notes that we're going through in this podcast in your Nobo or your notes booklet. So chapter three, yes, this does say part one here. So chapter three um, will be broken down into three parts and this will be part one of three. So let's review what we've already talked about. In chapter three, section one, we talked about the difference between an ionic and covalent bond. So if you can remember, an ionic bond occurred between a metal and a non-metal and a covalent bond occurred between two non-metals. Now there was also another category that we used to distinguish between ionic and covalent, and that was ionic compounds in forming an ionic bond will transfer, transfer electrons, whereas a covalent bond, and they will share electrons. So we're first gonna look at here how we name an ionic compound. So ionic compounds are composed of positive ions, and if you look on your periodic table, all of the positive ions are in the metals category, and they are going to bond with a non-metal, which are negative ions. And if you look at the non-metals on your periodic table, they will be negative ions. And so how we name this is that we take the positive ion's name and we write that first. Then we take the negative ion's name and we write the beginning of it and then we add this IDE at the end. Now let's work through an example. And so here's our first example. If I'm looking at this, I'm first going to look this up on the periodic table and realize that this is my metal. And then I'm going to look up this O and realize that this is my non-metal. So I know that I am dealing with an ionic compound. So the rules state, name the positive ion first and do not change anything about its name. So that Mg on the periodic table is represented as magnesium. And the negative ion that forms the ending, this is oxygen. Now this is where we drop the ending, so to say, and add that IDE. And so when I drop the ending in oxygen, it's that YGN, and therefore this ionic compound will have the name of magnesium oxide. Now we're going to go through a few more examples, but let's first review all of the non-metals and their endings that they will get changed to. Okay, so some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. For example, there's that INE ending, and that gets dropped and changed to an IDE. I-N-E to I-D-E. So fluorine becomes fluoride. Chlorine becomes chloride. So bromine, yeah, you could probably guess it, becomes bromide. Iodine becomes iodide. Now not all of them have that nice I-N-E ending, and so you're just going to have to become familiar with what the ending is that gets dropped in these other nonmetals. So oxygen, as we have just gone through, that Y-G-E-N gets dropped to oxide. Sulfur becomes sulfide. Selenium, selenide. Nitrogen, nitride. Phosphorus becomes phosphide. And the last one we're going to look at, carbon becomes carbide. So these are all of the non-metals that get changed in the ending of ionic compounds. So here's another example. So when asked to name something, we first need to identify that this is an ionic compound. So we would want to see that this calcium is a metal and this nitrogen is a non-metal. So Ca is the positive ion and yes, that gets named the calcium. N is the negative ion and this gets named nitrogen. So when I change the ending and I name this compound, this ionic compound, it becomes calcium nitride. Now we're not going to worry for now about these um, subscripts, these little numbers, because we are going to come to that later in the lesson. So take a moment to solve for yourself NaCl, Li3N, and come back and check your answers. So hopefully you got those correct, and we are looking at sodium chloride and lithium nitride. Before we move on to actually writing the chemical formula for ionic compounds, I want to see if you have noticed a pattern in the compounds that we have talked about so far. So here are three of the compounds, ionic compounds that we've looked at. Now pause for a moment and see if you can see a pattern that is occurring between these. This pattern is going to be important um, a little ways down the road. And if you can see the pattern, I'm hoping that you will see that in each compound, we have two capitals. 
Now that's going to be important because each, we know that each atom in a compound begins with a capital because all of the atoms in the periodic table, their symbols all start with a capital. So for each of these, we have two different types of atoms. Two different types. Now that's going to be important when we come back to looking at polyatomic um, compounds or um, compounds that contain polyatomic ions, um, and that's going to be important to be able to recognize that. Now that we've looked how you name ionic compounds, we are now going to look at writing the chemical formula for ionic compounds. So in an ionic compound, in order to write it, we have to get the positive charges, that is the metals, to balance with the negative charges. Now in order to do this, I can, I'm going to show you two different methods, one of which I call the teeter-totter method. So here's my teeter-totter that is balancing here. And on my teeter-totter, I'm going to put all of my positive ions on the left side, and I'm going to put all my negative ions on the right side. So said in another way, this is the side that I'm going to include the metals on, and this is the side I'm going to include the non-metals on. So let's take an example. Let's look at mixing sodium metal with sulfur, a non-metal. So I'm first going to write the symbol and its charge of sodium, and there is sulfur. You'll notice here that sodium has a charge of plus one, sulfur has a charge of negative one. Well, my first step says I need those to be balanced. And so in order to balance those, I'm going to need to add on another sodium ion. And the reason why I need to do this is because I want to see these two positive charges here, these two positive charges, I want to see them add up to a positive two so that it balances out with the charge of a negative two that is on my sulfur. And so right now my teeter-totter would be happy because it would have equal amounts on both of the positive side and the negative side. So teeter-totter is my first method. My second method is to make a table. And in my table, I'm going to write my positive ions in this column, and in this column I'm going to write my negative ions. Now these are my addition columns, and in the end I want the two columns to add up to be zero. And so you can see, again, that right now I have a charge of negative two in this column, and a charge of positive one in this column. So that is not currently balanced. And so what I need to do is add another sodium. So now looking at when I add those two charges, I end up with plus two in this column. And then when I transfer down my charges of my negative ions, my total is negative two. So when I add those two together, it does equal zero. And so now those charges are balanced. So what does this mean? How do we write the formula for this? So this is where this term subscript comes in because the subscript tells us how many of each ion exists. So now I write the symbols. I know I have sodium, Na, and I know I have sulfur. Well, in sodium, when balancing those out, you can see here I had two sodium ions that were listed down to balance that charge. And so what I'm going to write is my subscript of two. And in, when I'm looking at the sulfur, I can see I only needed one sulfur to balance out the, with the sodium charges, and therefore I have one. Oh, but remember in chemistry, we're not going to include the ones because the ones would make everything very messy. So my final formula for this is Na2S. This means that I have two sodium and one sulfur atom. So in total, I would have three atoms in total in this compound. Now I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, but um, the ratios are always written in reduced form. But I'm going to come back to that a little bit later when I start to explain more about that. Okay, let's go through another example. So the question says, what is the formula for calcium fluoride? So step one is find the symbols on the periodic table and list their ion charge. So calcium has a charge of plus two, and I have fluorine, which has a charge of negative one. So the next step is to ask yourself, do the charges equal zero or are they balanced? So my answer to that is no, which therefore if it's no, I know I need to use one of my methods, my teeter-totter method or my table method to add it up. So I'm going to use both and then you're going to start to choose which one is makes most sense for you. So my teeter-totter method, I know that I'm going to have my positives added in this on the left side, my negatives added on the right side. So my positive here is a plus two.
My negative here is flaring with its charge of negative 1. We know those aren't balanced. What I need to add them both to would be the 2. So I'm going to add on another fluorine, and now I can see that my total charges on the calcium is the plus 2. My total charges on the fluorine is the negative 2. Now table method, I would put my positives in one column, my negatives in another. And rate, I want these two columns to be able to add to 0. So currently, I'm looking at a plus 2 and a negative 1. Those aren't added together to equal zero. So what I need to do is to determine what needs to be added. So if I add another fluorine molecule, because that's the smaller of the values right now, now I have a charge of negative two. If I look at the calcium, it already has the charge of plus two. When I add those two things together, yes, it does equal zero. So that would be balancing the um, charges on calcium and fluoride. So your final answer for this would be, I have one calcium, and I'm not going to put in the ones, and I have two fluorines, which I use the subscript of two to represent two fluorine atoms. So there in this red square here, you can see this is the formula for calcium fluoride. Okay, let's go through one more example that's a little bit more difficult. So asking for the formula of magnesium phosphide. Looking on your periodic table, you will see magnesium has a charge of plus two. Phosphorus, remember that ending has been changed, has a charge of negative three. So do the charges equal zero? No, plus two and negative three do not equal zero. So now I need to balance these. So if I'm looking at magnesium, has a charge of plus two, phosphorus, negative three. I'm going to see that um, the plus two is the larger in, is the smaller in value, so I'm going to add another magnesium. Now I have plus four in this column and negative three in this column. Those are not yet balanced, so I know I need to add on more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on another phosphorus. So now I have a total of negative six in this column. Well, I can make plus four. If I add on one more magnesium, now I have a total of plus six. Yes, that would now be balanced. So let's look at our table method. We have magnesium with a charge of plus two, phosphorus with a charge of negative three. I want these columns, when added together, to be equal zero. So I'm going to continue to add ions until I can get them to be balanced, to equal zero. So if I have three magnesium ions, that's a total of plus six. If I have two phosphorus ions, that's a total of negative six, and that would now be balanced. And so my chemical formula for this, I'm going to write the symbols, so Mg and a P. I can see that there were one, two, three magnesiums, so my subscript is going to be three, and I can see here that there is one, two phosphorus ions, and so my subscript is going to be two. So this here is going to be my formula for magnesium phosphide, Mg3P2. Okay, I'd like you to pause the video and try for yourself for writing the formula for lithium bromide, and come back and check your answer. Okay, so hopefully you've gone to the periodic table and you've seen that lithium symbol is Li and it has a charge of plus one. Bromine is Br and has a charge of negative one. So your second question is to ask yourself, is it balanced? And your answer to this is yes, it is already balanced. When I have plus one on my teeter-totter, it's balanced out with a negative one on the other side of the teeter-totter. So your chemical formula for lithium bromide is simply LiBr with no subscripts. Um, remember that I, these do represent one here and a one here, but we don't write ones in chemistry. We just write the twos and above. Um, so that brings us to the end of this video lesson. Um, we're going to practice a few more of these in class and move on to part two of chapter 3.2.